Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's webinar. Now, um, before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Lionel Ng. I'm from ABB Singapore. I am the Global Training Specialist and I've been with ABB now close to 20 years. Now, today's webinar will be mainly catering to the countries who are dealing with the IEC standard, so basically the IEC countries. And today's topic is about short circuit current. Now, the, short, the IEC standard for short circuit current is IEC 60909, which we will touch on today. So just bear with me for the next 40 minutes or so. And if you have any questions later, we will give you my email address where you can send uh, your questions to and I'll take care of it. All right, in due course. All right, so let's begin. Now, the IEC standard for short circuit calculation is IEC 60909, okay? So in 909, um, there are many parts, part one, part zero to part four. So part zero, we are looking at the calculation of currents. Part one, we are looking at the factors for the calculation of short circuit currents. And part two, we're talking about the data of electrical equipment. For example, the equipment in the system that we need to take note of. Part three will be the currents during two separate simultaneous line to earth sh short circuits and partial short circuit currents flowing through earth. Part four, we have examples of the calculation of short circuit currents, okay? So there are different parts, but today basically we will, the main focus will be on the short circuit currents, some of the parameters that we need to take, take note of, all right? Now, in IC60909 part zero, uh, this is the short circuit currents in three-phase AC systems. In this particular standard, this is actually what the standard looks like. Let me get my pen. Okay. So this is what the standard looks like. Okay. So this is the IC60909. And in the standards, they cover things like uh, terms and definitions, short circuit currents, um, calculating assumptions. Now, assumptions are very important because um, a lot of factors affect the short circuit current. For example, things like your cable sizing, your cable length, the installation method, for example. So all these are different factors because country to country, the installation method could be different. Some people could use um, cable ladders, some people could use cable trays. So there, there are different factors that affect the current carrying capacity of cables. So there are many assumptions, in fact. Then we are that we have also the short circuit impedance of electrical equipment, like for example, the transformers, the utilities, the cables, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's have a look at, at what we have. Now, first of all, the terms and definition. In IC60909, there is the term and definition for short circuit current. They define short circuit current, um, as you can see, basically a short circuit is when two conductors carrying current touches each other or when the impedance across these two conductors is close to zero. When that happens, that is basically a short circuit. Okay, so under this condition, when the current flows, basically that is the short circuit current. OK, now in the definitions, there is also what we call the, the definitions for perspective short circuit current. Basically, the perspective short circuit current is the current, the maximum current that will flow when there is a short circuit in the system. OK, so let's have a look. When there is a short circuit in the system, basically this is the the waveform that you will see okay um, sorry let me get rid of that okay this is the waveform that you will see all right we have first of all the initial symmetrical short circuit current 
All right, then we have the peak current. We have the peak current, and this is the peak current. All right. We have the DC component. This is the DC component, this line here. Sorry. All right. And what happens to the waveform is that when, during the peak, when there's a short circuit, there will be a peak. And if it, after a certain time, it goes into steady state. All right. So we have also the steady state current. So this is a typical short circuit waveform of a short circuit current. Now in the standards, there are also definitions. Uh, there are actually, it's kind of like the how the short circuits are actually defined are all there. Basically, we can have, for example, the picture on the left, we have a three phase short circuit. Now, as you can see, we have uh, line to line to line. So there's a three phase, okay? Three phase short circuit. On the picture on the right, basically you have line to line short circuit. Line to line short circuit, sometimes we call it also as face to face short circuit. All right, so basically it's the, more or less it's the same thing. So this is a line to line short circuit. Now we have also face to face to earth because we have uh, one face here, one face here, and earth here. All right, so if this two happens to earth, then it's a face to face to earth or line to line to earth. And the other one is only one of the phases. Okay, one of the phases here and to earth. So this is a face to earth or line to earth short circuit. Okay, so all this are already is defined in the, the standards itself. Now, earlier on, I mentioned about assumptions. Now, when we work on short circuit calculation, there are many assumptions to take care of. Um, this, this few assumptions here, this, I won't go through everything, but these are the ones defined in the standards itself. All right. So first of all, for example, during the short circuit, all right, there will be no change in the type of short circuit involved. That is the three phase short circuit remains three phase. Line to earth, short circuit remains line to earth. All right. For the duration of press my cursor. For the duration of here, for the duration of the short circuit, there is no change in the network involved. All right. The impedance of the transformers is referred to the is referred to the tech changer in main position. Arc resistance are not taken into account. Arc resistance as in for example, if a circuit breaker opens, right, there is always an arc. So these arcs are actually resistances. So we are con that is considered arc resistance. Or when there's a flash over between phase to phase, there is a resistance. So that's not because that's not so easy to define. Okay. Shunt emittances of uh, non-rotating rota rotating loads shall be neglected. All right. In the positive and negative and a zero sequence. So we have this, we have line capacitance shall be neglected in a positive and negative system. Line capacitance in the zero sequence shall be taken into account in low impedances. Earth next networks having an earth fault factor, all right, higher than 1.4. So this are, um, a lot of calculation is also considering if, for example, if we need to calculate also the short circuit to earth, so there are different factors involved, and this is just a particular factor, 1.4. Magnetizing emittances and transformers shall be neglected, right? In the point, in the positive and negative sequence. So these are just assumptions, but there are also many assumptions. For example, uh, cable installation, the installation method, it always, it will definitely affect the current carrying capacity of the cable itself. So what we have here is we have, for example, the utility. We have a media voltage cable. We have the transformer, the LV cable, and the loads. All right. So all of this affect the short circuit current. So in order for us to calculate, right, we need to convert all these impedances into its, all this equipment into its equivalent impedances, like what you see here. This is the impedance for the utility, the impedance for the transformer, all right, 
the loads, the cables, all right? So all this will that affect the short circuit current. So what we do is we need to convert all this equipment, the one on top, to its equivalent impedances, the one below. Now, when we calculate short circuit current, we have to take note also of the minimum and the maximum short circuit current. In IC60909 table one, there is a this table one defines the factor to use, okay? The voltage factor. So the voltage factor first of all we have um, here 1.05 or 0 0.9, 0.95. So plus minus 5%. Now, if your system has a voltage tolerance of let's say 10%, for example, then we can use 1.1 for maximum and 0 0.9 for minimum, okay? And the other data is for the high voltage. So earlier on, we mentioned that we have to convert, for example, the equivalent impedance. So this is the utility. The utility, this is what we get, okay? The equivalent impedance. You have the utility and the transformer, Basically, we have this and we have this, okay? So, actually, in fact, short circuit calculation is not that difficult. Um, it actually boils down to the basic of uh, Ohm's law. Now, how do we define, how do we get the impedances? Basically, we can calculate it out. Um, for example, for a transformer, we can find the transformer based on First of all, the short circuit voltage based on the uh, secondary voltage, all right, based on the power rating of the transformer. All right, so the all this data, basically with this data, you can actually find out what is the impedance of the transformer. But then again, um, Normally for short circuit calculation, it takes a lot of time if we want to work out everything. That's why we have softwares like uh, Easy Power. Uh, we have our own software as well. So Easy Power is a software that uh, I've used, I've tried, and it's it's quite interesting to use. Okay, it's very similar to something like ETAP that you have in the market. Now, short circuit impedance for cables, overhead lines and cables. The, the good thing about overhead lines and cables, all this data can be extracted from the cable data sheet. All right. And most of the time, there is already a tolerance there. Why? Because um, the conductor is normally at um, 20 degrees. Oops, sorry. The conductor is at 20 degrees. Now, the good thing about copper conductors is that when the temperature goes up, right, the impedance theoretically will increase, right? So there will be an additional reduction in the short circuit as well. All right, so this is something that you need to take care of, take note of. All right, you, you, as long as we use 20 degrees, we are safe because most of the time, as long as there's current flowing through a conductor, it, the temperature should be quite high. So this is actually what we do. We have earlier on, we have converted the network. We have converted the media voltage cable. We have converted the transformer, the LV cable to its equivalent impedance. So this is all the equivalent impedance now. So if I want to find out what is the current after the LV cable, basically, we need to use Ohm's law. This here is Ohm's law, where we have the current equals to the secondary voltage, which is the prime, the voltage on the secondary of the transformer, divided by root three, three phase system, and the sum of all the impedance here. Okay, so this is very simple. This is not rocket science. Now, so when it comes to the distribution network itself, okay? We can also find the impedance um, of the network based on the, the voltage of the network, if you know the rated current of the network. 
All right, if you don't know, you can also base on the power of the network. OK. Now. Um, generators. So generators are able to provide you with current as well. There are another source, so. We can find the impedance of the generator based on the sub transient. OK, sub transient. Or in fact, most of the time what I do is I can also define the sub the current. The short circuit current based on the sub transient reactance, OK, which is here. The XD double prime is the same. So right now we are finding the impedance first, then we find the current or we can jump straight into finding the current. OK. OK. For transformers now, transformers have um, what we call the short circuit voltage, which is. I'm sorry, what was that? Which is the UK, all right, percentage. Now the short circuit voltage is usually between four to eight percent, depending on the size of the transformer. OK, so for smaller transformers, we are looking at about four percent. Over here. Uh, 630 to 1.2 MVA, we are looking at maybe about 5%. Then 6% is for up to 2.5 MVA and 7% for 6.3 MVA. OK, so on and so forth. 8% is for 25. So different transformer sizes have got uh, different short circuit voltages, so we just need to take note of that. Now, motors, motors also, they are able to contribute current. So what happens to a motor is that a motor can operate in four different quadrants. All right, in the four different quadrant, there's a quadrant where it becomes regenerative, meaning it becomes like a generator. The only thing is that the current provide that is provided by the, the, the motor itself, all right, that, that provided by this motor is relatively small. The sub transient reactants we are looking at here. Between 20 to 25 percent. Usually a gen set generator or a generator can provide you with uh, short circuit current that, that has sub transient reactants between 12 to 20 percent. And this is even higher, 20 to 25 percent. So definitely the, the current is smaller. But then these days, uh, larger motors are actually controlled by variable speed drives or soft starters. And this solid state devices usually has a protection to ensure that the motors do not contribute back into the system because it will kill those solid state devices. OK. Now. If I have a single line like this, if I have my utility, this is my utility. I have my media voltage cable. I have my transformer. I have my LV cable and I have all these parameters. Basically, with this data, I am able to find what is the short circuit current. OK. Now, if you are a designer, I'm sure you will not want to spend too much time calculating what is the short circuit current. Now, most of the time when I work on projects, I base on just rough an estimate of what will be the short circuit current after the transformer, then everything else I will use man I, I will use either a software softwares like easy power. But for me, I have my own software. I will use my own software as well. Uh, it's called uh, dot web to help me to calculate and understand the system so that I can size the components correctly. OK. So basically what we need to do with the utility now, the network, is basically to convert the data into its equivalent impedance. Now, because we want to find the short circuit current on the LV portion here, anywhere here, OK? So what we need to do is we need to reflect all the impedances to the low voltage based on the turns ratio of the transformer, OK? So this is important. If you are working on media voltage, everything we can run on media voltage. But if you are working on LV, so everything we, we use LV. OK. So this is the turns ratio. Now over here, I have given to you basically Ohm's law. We have the power triangle. 
um, your power equals your, your voltage times your current, and for this one, Ohm's law, okay? For the cable, now the cable is more straightforward because we take the impedance, right, from the data sheet, multiply by the length, okay? Usually the length is based on per kilometer, all right? Then from there you multiply, you get, you divide by the, if it's in meters, it depends on what's your length, then you can you can find your impedance based on your distance. But then again, this has also to be reflected to the LV side because we need to find everything in the LV, okay? Now the transformer itself, we use the formula earlier on that I showed you to find the impedance. Okay, with this impedance, basically, uh, we can just include it into the equation or the formulas later. So we have the utility, we have the media voltage cable, and we have the uh, transformer impedance. The last is the LV cable. Now the LV cable is also easy because we don't need to reflect it down from the medium going through the transformer, the um, transformer uh, step down. So what we do is we just get the equivalent impedance based on the length that you have, okay? And this is the length. So now if I have all this data, so basically finding the current, if I want to find the current here, it is basically your voltage here, okay? Your voltage divided by your impedances, which is ZU, ZC, and ZT, okay? Z C, M, V, and M, V side. So if you want to find the short circuit here, basically you use all the data here, all right, at 400. Then we can find what is the actual short circuit current there, 13.6 K. Now, as uh, electrical engineers, I'm sure you guys are familiar with single line diagrams. On the right hand side, you will see two single line diagrams. Both are basically the same. It depends on what is being used uh, locally. On the left, right, the first diagram, I do not have a switch disconnector. I only have a uh, circuit breaker followed by cable, followed by transformer, LV cable. Whereas for this one, I have the medium voltage circuit breaker, I have cable, I have an isolator or disconnector followed by a transformer, okay? So it's practically the same. It's just an additional isolating function, isolator before the transform, transformer itself. Now, this single line diagram that you see now, this probably might not be a, such a typical single line diagram. For this particular case, I have an interlock system I have two circuit breakers. What does this mean? This means that both the circuit, both the transformers are running, but there's only one transformer serving the load. Only when, for example, if, if this is my primary transformer, if it fails, only then will this kick in. Okay, the secondary transformer will kick in. All right. Now, this could be, or maybe not also, uh, familiar with you guys, two transformers running parallel. All right, but uh, later I will show you what are the effects of having multiple transformers running parallel. For this particular case, at any one time, both the transformers are always running, serving the load, okay? So which means that the total consumption may be half or it could be also more, it depends, depends on how the design is like, okay? This is more common to a more common design from where I'm coming from. I have multiple transformers with uh, mechanical interlock, which means at any one time, each transformers are running, but each transformers are only serving part of the main bus itself. So one transformer is serving half, the other transformer is serving the other half. All right, only when one transformer fails, then I can switch it over but then the capacity might not be enough. So we need to do load shedding or things like that, all right? Let's have a look. Now, for this particular case, if I have a short circuit here after L1, what happens is that 
if I have a short circuit here, the current, depending on if this circuit breaker or this coupler is open or closed, if it is open, there is only current flowing from one path here. If it is closed, then we will have current flowing from two paths. OK, so if this coupler is closed, then the short circuit current, in fact, will be higher compared to when it is open. Similarly, if I have a short circuit at the main bus here, if the coupler is open, OK, only one path. If it is closed, I will have two paths. So the ratings of the components has to be higher. For this particular case, if I have a short circuit at the bus, the main circuit breakers, uh, LV1 and LV2, basically they see the full fault current. The downstream circuit breakers will not see the full fault current because it is uh, before them. But for the earlier case, yes, the downstream circuit breakers will see both the full fault full fault from both the transformers, so they have to be rated higher. OK. Now, what happens if if I have a short circuit here at this point here? Also, depending on this, open or close, if this is closed, this circuit breaker, LV1, will see fault current, yes, but the fault current from this transformer here. OK, so now, if the transformers are identical, then the short circuit current will be the same. If the transformers are different in sizes, then the short circuit current will be different and has to be calculated separately, all right, and added up together. Now, let's have a look at some simple calculation. If I have my utility, okay, and if I have a transformer, 1.6 MVA, uh, 22 to 400, 22 kV to 400, 6 percent impedance or short circuit voltage. Um, I can work it out based on the formulas that I've given to you earlier. I can find out what is my total impedance, all right? And from there, I am able to calculate what is my short circuit current here, 37. This is Ohm's law, okay? It doesn't change. Now, one transformer, 1.6 MVA, take note, 37.2, okay, 37.2 K. What happened now if I if I have two identical transformers, 1.6 MVA each? So, in fact, if I have two transformers, what will happen now is that my short circuit voltage, where is my cursor? Sorry, yeah. My short, my short circuit current will now be 74 K, 74.4 K, okay? Now, there are cases whereby we split the transformer up. We don't have the transformer running full. So the total load may be 1.6 MVA, but the two transformers, the total sum is also 1.6. For this particular case, uh, two transformers each. Now, having two small transformers, basically you can see that the total calculated value is 45.2. It's higher as compared to one transformer. 1, 1.6 MVA transformer, okay? So now looking at this or looking at earlier on the first calculation 37 kA, the high, the lowest rating of air circuit breakers that we have, all right, is a 42 kA circuit breaker. So we can use that 42 k. But if under this condition, although the current may be flowing less, all right, the circuit breakers in fact have to be higher rated. Um, instead of 42, we, because the short circuit current is already 45, we cannot use 42. So we have to go to, for a 50 k circuit breaker, and that will have an impact on the cost itself. All right. Now, most of the time when I look at single line diagrams, uh, when I'm working on projects, um, a lot of information is missing. Basically this. The information from the utility is missing. So normally what do I do? I will ignore the utility, okay? I will totally ignore the utility and start working only from here. Why? Because it is still safe. If I work based on from the transformer and I include the utility later, the short circuit current should be lower, all right? Over here, you can see that without the utility, my short circuit current is 38 compared to 37.2. This is now 38.5, okay? Slightly higher. Now, 
Um, the whole idea of uh, short circuit calculation is so that we can size components correctly. All right. First of all, the main components that affect the short circuit current would be the circuit breakers. First of all, we have uh, this, what you see here, the time current curve. The, this is the time current curve of circuit breakers. We have the vertical axis, which is time, the horizontal axis, which, which is the current. All right. The first protection that you see there, the red one, this is actually what we call the L function. The L function is for long time. So this is protects against overload. Next, we have the S function, which is for short time or delayed short circuit. Now, the delayed short circuit is for um, short circuit protection, but in fact, we can delay it, okay? The other function that is available is what we call the I function or the instantaneous protection. Okay, this is the protection against instantaneous short circuit. So when there's a short circuit, it will, um, it will trip. Now, this point here, all right, this point here, this is what we call the ICU or the ultimate braking capacity of the circuit breaker. Now, earlier on when we calculated value 37, the 37,000 amps must not exceed this point here, okay? If it exceeds this point, what will happen is that the circuit breaker will fail. It could explode. So whatever it is, your short circuit current cannot be higher than the ICU rating or the ICS. The ICS is sometimes what we call the serviceable um, short circuit rating, all right? of the circuit breaker itself. The other function that we have is what we call the G function. Now, this G function is for ground fault. This is to protect the system against ground fault. So as you can see that the current ratings are lower, the ground fault function is usually set maximum, uh, it is usually set from 20% onwards, okay, of the rated current of the circuit breaker. Now, we do have some technical application paper that you can go through. Um, you will be able to find this in a website. Here, is, here are the links. All right, you can find it from this website. Okay, you can go into this website and you will be able to find it there, the technical documents. This explains in more detail um, the short circuit current because today I don't have much time. I only have about 45 minutes maximum. So this is what I'm just sharing with you for today. All right, so it should, you need more information uh, you can look this up, or if you can't sleep at night, you can also look this up. I think this is um, quite an, a good book to make you sleep. So it's not very thick, but anyway, technical stuff usually does that. Now, we have also an electrical installation handbook. Now, this electrical installation handbook, um, we have a lot of information. First of all, we have a table in there. Um, uh, okay, it's a little bit small. Let me try to enlarge it for you. Okay, this table actually helps us to determine the short circuit current of a downstream of a cable, all right? The, and provided we have the upstream data, for example, what is the short circuit before the cable? And what is the length of the cable? Then we are able to define what is the short circuit downstream of the cable. So over here, we have the cable size, we have the cable length, and if you have the short circuit rating upstream of the cable, you will be able to find the data from here. So all of this, this is the data of the short circuit downstream from the cable. So let me show you how to use it. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, nowadays, short circuit calculation, this is fundamental, yes, but it takes up a lot of time because um, a lot of designs does not only involve one circuit, it is multiple circuits. So in order for us to save time, we rely on software, softwares like uh, Easy Power. Easy Power has a software that you can look them up. The particular software that I'm using is a calculation software, it's the same, but uh, it's a demo unit that I'm showing you. So basically I drew a simple single line diagram and asked it to calculate what is the short circuit current. So this example, so but this particular example, I'm using different methods on how to prove to you that softwares actually can be used. Um, softwares that is built into our software, uh, Doc Web, as well as Easy Power, you can is defined also in the standards itself. You can choose five percent or ten percent. Okay, for us, uh, in our default is 10%, so it makes it more or less safer, but you can choose, all right? You can choose 10 or 
And I'm also using the, the this table here. This is the table as a comparison. So let's uh, enlarge it and have a look. Now I started off with having 50k, all right, at the main uh, before the cable. So I have 50k here. Okay, so this is 50k, all right, 49.9, 49 point something k. I have my cable size. Okay, this is my cable size, 35 mm squared cable. I have my cable length, all right, and with this data, I'm able to find what is my short circuit current here. So from the table, it shows 12 kA. But from my software, our ABB software that we are using, that I'm using, it shows me 13.2. At least I'm safe, all right? With the Easy Power software, it shows me 12.4 kA, 12.5. So we are safe. So Anyway, the so the closest circuit breaker that is um, closest to the this rating uh, to a 12 kA would be a 25 kA circuit breaker. Okay, for modern K circuit breaker, the lowest rating for air circuit breaker would be 42 kA. All right, so this actually just proves that in fact um, softwares are very much more useful. It does a lot more with a lot less time compared to manual calculation. Now I do use make use of manual calculation, but manual calculation I use it just at the beginning, just as a guide to roughly tell me where am I, where am I standing. Okay, so even for this example, we can do manual calculation, but as you can see, that uh, it's quite a number of steps, and usually this is where we make mistakes. So if I did the manual calculation, it works out to be 10.72. Now 10.72, I have not included the 10% tolerance. So if I include 10.72, it could be 11 point something. So it's quite small. So 11 point something is still acceptable, all right? Because the the software has given us one for my software, the ABB software is 13, for the uh, Easy Power software is 12.5. Okay, so it's more or less safe. It's, I, I feel that uh, it is okay to rely on software so that we can make it cut our time. The more time you have, you can spend on other projects rather than just do, doing your manual calculation for the whole project. I think that will make us go crazy, all right? So that's all I have to share with you for today with the limited time that I have. Um, now, I will give you my email address so that you can actually drop me a mail should you have any questions. Um, this is actually a recording. That's why we cannot do the um, Q&A live and also because of the time where I'm located. It's a little bit difficult for me. So unless I wake up uh, close to midnight, I guess. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this information that I've just given to you and feel free to drop me a mail if you have any questions. All right. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's all I have to share with you for today. All right. Take care, stay safe and uh, goodbye.